Hi guys, I hope you're all alright. Um, had a lovely weekend. I didn't do any cooking yesterday because it was Mother's Day, so I did have my children, my grandchildren round, which was fabulous. Um, and Ian, my husband, did the Sunday dinner. So if you want to pop over to Betty Eats Food, you'll be able to see which one he did for us. So today what I've decided to do is some tandoori chicken. What I do is spatchcock the chicken, take the skin off and put the spices on. I'm doing it in my lunchtime. Um, because I wanted to marinate for a few hours before we cook it this evening. So I'll just bring you down and show you what I've got for that. Right, so this is my take on a tandoori chicken. So I do have a chicken, some natural yogurt, my old favourite ginger and garlic paste. And the spices I'm going to use is some garam masala, some Kashmiri chilli because I do like the colour that that brings to it. Bit of turmeric, some cumin. And I put a little bit of smoked paprika in because obviously I haven't got a tandoor oven. So just to get a little bit of smokiness in there and a little bit of lemon juice as well and a dash of oil. So what we'll do is I'll bring you over and we'll get cracking with this chicken. Hey guys, so I just thought there, I thought I might as well do the, the marinade for it first and that can just be lying there and the, the chicken can just go straight into it. So first off I've got the yoghurt. got two big tablespoons of yogurt there should be enough into that or some ginger and some garlic and I think this is a new one so I might have to take a little bit off it certainly do right I squeeze a garlic as well teaspoon of turmeric I keep getting wrong you know off in for keeping the spoons and everything in here so you will never find any I also want a, a spoon of garam masala so that's like a dessert spoon in that one one a spoon of smoked paprika like I say this is just to sort of give it a smoky taste because we don't have a tablet oven not lucky enough to have that and some cumin and then my favorite Kashmiri chilli. You can use any chilli powder for this. I just I like the red colour that this gives. A good couple of teaspoons of that. And a squeeze of lemon juice. mix that all together and then that's just ready for when the chicken's prepared I mean I've seen people put red food colouring and everything in you can if you want because you get food grade um, food colouring in that but it's not for me Right, so that's not too bad there. Eh? Make the right hash of this, but there you go, that's that. And let's move on to the chicken. I've never used those, go back in. Over there for the moment. Everything else out of the way. I don't want anything contaminating for the chicken. Right, so it's a knife, there it is. So let's deal with this bad boy. Right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to spatchcock it. That just means taking that backbone out there. Do have these scissors. I always tend to struggle a little bit with this because my hands. But let's see if it'll let us. Let's cut down one side. 
just got to get the right part of the bone. Once you get through a certain part, it is really easy. I just, I should have been to do this bit. But let's try from the bottom. And if all else fails, I'll get the big sharp knife out. Yeah, I think I'm gonna have to get the knife out. Thank you, rinse my hand. try with this one. That's better. Obviously be careful of your fingers when you're doing this. In case your knife or your scissors or anything slip. There you go. That's one bit off. I'm actually making this look more difficult than it needs to be, to be perfectly honest. Here we go. And then one through. And out it comes. There you go. Again, keep a hold of that for stocks. If you want to make stocks, that is, you don't... No, it does not everybody likes to do stuff like that. And now we have to take its coat off. As much as you can. Can it always get everything off? Don't worry, I know there seems to be chicken everywhere, but I will, once I'm done, I'll clean up and I will disinfect everywhere as well. Right, as you can see, it's not that hard. I'll, I'm not going to fiddle about with the wings. The wings can keep its skin on. Life's too short for that. Here we go. This bit. And this leg. The only reason why I haven't turned the camera off and said I will come back to you is because my hands are full of chicken. <laughs> chicken! And I would have to actually um, touch the camera so if you just bear with us while I'm doing this bit. And then that's it. And there you go. Just take that off. I've already used this for the um, the chicken. I'm just going to continue to use that. So just open it up like this. Press it down. That's it. It's all spatchcocked. And now what we need to do is slash some of the meat and into the breast. That'll get all the marinade in there. Here we go. Doesn't have to be perfect, just to get it in there. Right. Wash your hands. Right, 
Right, pull the sleeves up, get rid of all the chicken bits. Like I say, don't worry, I will have all this cleaned up. So this is the fun part. Pick your chicken up, put him in there. There we go. Make sure you get some of that marinade in all of them slits and all over the chicken. In there, these little armpits. Get up some more, make sure it's all under it. Right, what I'm going to do is, as I'm going to leave that to marinade, finish off my day's work and then we'll come back to it. I'm just going to quickly wash my hands again. I'll have turmeric pan for the rest of the afternoon. <coughs> right guys, so I'm going to put a bit of film on the top of that, put it back in the fridge and just let it marinate and I'll see you later. Right guys, so I'm just on my break in the afternoon so I thought I would make some naan breads to go with um, the tandoori chicken tonight with a bit of salad. So I'm just going to make that up. I've got 380 grams of bread flour there. Got 112 grams of um, tepid water. Just move that out of the way. So what I want now is I want a tablespoon of sugar going in. And then a sachet of yeast. Mm -hmm. Where's my scissors? of yeast to go in there if I can get it open there we go we need a hundred actually I should put that back on there because I need 112 grams of yogurt come on there we go 112 grams of yogurt let's put that in there this doesn't look very nice, does it? Here we go. Put that on one side a second. I want um, three tablespoons of oil. Here we go. Okay. And I want some salt. About a teaspoon of salt. And then we'll mix it all up. Now I can definitely get rid of that. Now I'm not using the food press processor on this one because this is just a three three minute knead. That's all we'll, we'll have to do on this one. So we'll just put that together like that. Pour it. this into here, add it all in, should get a bigger bowl, but it is what it is. Actually, do you know what would be easier just to get my hands in, wouldn't it? Once the, the liquid is in, like about now, I can get rid of this. Put this out here. Like I say, this is a really quick knead on this. Put 
That's it all. Try and get it off my fingers a little bit. I've got some more flour there in case I need some more. But normally I don't when I'm doing this. Get it all together. But different flours absorb at different times. So you can have one lot of bread flour that will absorb more than what another lot of bread flour can, even if they're exactly the same make. Right. Oh, I'm just going to give this a bit of a knead. All these will come in. And then I can, for the rest of the afternoon while I'm working, I'll just put this in a, a nice warm spot and just let that rise. Get a bit of air in it, get that yeast working. All this in as well. Just get another bowl and drop a cup. Right, I'm just going to put a covering over that and then leave that to stand. Quickly wash my hands so I can turn the camera off. Right, and I'll see you shortly. Welcome back, guys. So, right, what I want to start with is the naan breads. And when they're cooked, I am going to do them with the garlic and coriander butter. I'm going to put that all over. So I've got coriander here. Just stalks and all. Don't waste the stalks. Same on parsley. I mean, obviously, thyme, rosemary, and stuff like that is different, but softer herbs like this. Even basil, to be honest, when I do eating a pesto. It's one thing I'm not that keen on is pesto pasta. So I normally have spicy pasta. But when I do it for him, and I'll just use the um the stalks as well. So got some butter. You don't need a load. So I'll just me tea tell. There we go. It's got about that much. Just pop it in the pan over here. Just show you that. There you go. Just got it in a nice pan there. Bit of squirt of garlic. And the coriander and then just let that melt. I love coriander, mate. I know a lot of people don't like it, so if you don't like it, maybe use parsley, something like that. That'll just give you the same sort of flavor. And now I think it's time to get on with the naan breads. So here is a naan bread mix, look. Nice and puffed. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna Put that into eight. Can you get? Actually, do you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna use the board I've just done the coriander on because it's all gonna go on there anyway. And the knife I did the butter with. And I'm just gonna put this into eight. Do it easier. Still doing it this way. Pop them over there. Over there. I'm not one of these people <laughs> that's going to weigh them so they're all exactly the same. Absolutely not. And that's one there. Then move that. And then literally just make it into a bit of a ball. There you go. It's got oil in, so you shouldn't have to flour your surface because you can see. On the surface there's a little bit but I'm just gonna put the big one on just to warm that right up and then 
sometimes it can be a bit of a pain to roll out because it literally wants to come back that's why I don't really want to use a lot of flour on here because if you use the flour it allows it to come back whereas if you just use the oil that's in the bread itself then it sort of sticks and just keep going Whatever shape it ends up, it ends up. And a dry pan to fry these, by the way. There we go. It's getting there, look. Every time you pick it up, it gets smaller. Oh, crease. Because this is really just going to be, what we're going to do is we'll rip this bit, bit off and put a bit of the um, tandoori chicken in it. Maybe it's a little bit, I've got some salad and I also, I had to go to the shops after work because we needed some milk. And I also got some um, coleslaw as well. I thought, do you know what, I can't remember the last time I actually had coleslaw. So I thought, right get some coleslaw now I think that's about as big as I'm going to get it because every time I pick it up it gets um, a bit smaller so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring you along Let's have a look as you can see that's just melting down really slowly in that pan and I'm just going to pick this up and shove it in the hot pan let's have a look let's see how it goes I've got a rack there ready to, to put it on. I'm just going to watch what this one does. You see the bubbles starting to form on that? Bit there and there. Now this is my ninja pan, to be perfectly honest it was the worst thing I've ever bought. I used another frying pan that I bought from Lidl's, non-stick. This one, never do an egg in this. It is absolutely rubbish. And But it's the only ninja product because I've got the ninja health grill, I've got the ninja 15 in one and I've got the ninja knives and I love them. Um, but this is the only disappointment out of the whole lot. Right, so I'm just gonna. You don't want that to get too hot. You don't want to scorch the garlic or the the coriander. I think I should have left this a little bit longer before I put this in here. Actually, let's have a little look. Here we go. Also and that actually you can see it's starting to go up in depth so just give this another couple of minutes yep yeah, it's starting to go there on the bottom I think that one's just about done. So what I'm going to do is, while well, I've got these here, I'm just going to get a pastry brush, just like this with the garlic and the coriander. If I can pick some of the coriander up, there we go, that's better. And that while it's warm, it'll just absorb it all in. So right guys, I'm going to crack on with the rest of these naan breads and I'll bring you back once they're all done. Right guys, so I decided I put two of them together to make a bigger one. So I just thought, you know, you can maybe make a wrap out of it. So I'm just going to do this one, bang it in the pan now. And let's have a little look at the two of them together. So I think I might do two like this. 
with the double and just one more. I do have those three all done. Let's just have a look at this one to see how this one goes. And once these are all done, then we can have a we can put the chicken in. And then once these are done, that's easy because the chicken just cooks itself. Got a bit of coleslaw, a bit of salad. Yeah. That's looking all right, is it? Like the bigger one, you can see this. I've got the, the extractor fan on because as you can see, it's it's really hot. The pan, see the bubbles coming up. I think it works better with the two. Wish I'd thought about that before. Hey, look at that. Yeah, I think that one's gonna be better so you can wrap the chicken in it. Right, so I'll bring you back once I've done the last, last uh, two. Right guys, that's all of them. That's the, the two bigger ones that I did and the four smaller ones. And because it's got yeast in it, it they will last for a few days. Or you could even freeze them if that's what you want to do and bring them out the next time. Just let them thaw out and put them in the oven for about two or three minutes. That's all it would take to bring up. So let's go and sort this chicken out. Right, so the chicken's been hanging about in the fridge all afternoon. Did this about one o'clock. Just get rid of that. That there for now. And then my sleeves up. Got my bacon tray. It's nice and clean, just well used. Just remember that. And then get this little bad boy and then just put her on there. There we go, put out the back some sort of shape. Now, whatever you do, don't forget you've got all of this in here. You have got some of the chicken juices that have come out, which I'm not going to particularly use, but we've got all of this. Let's make sure that it's. Oh, I forgot the little armpits. There we go. So I've got the oven set at about 180 because what I want to do is I want to cook this until it's cooked through first and then what we'll do is is I'll crank the heat up or maybe put the grill on just to get some nice tandoori marks. So make sure that look they're all in the cuts, the slits that I did earlier, they're all covered in it. I'm just going to wash my hands, sink full of nice hot soapy water should remember to do that all of the time. Right, get them nice and get these in the oven. Just gonna get some kitchen roll. Oh, sorry guys, didn't mean to do that. Right, let's get rid of some of these bits. That's gonna just burn for absolutely no reason. We'll just get rid of that and then we'll bang this in the oven. I'd say because it's spatchcocked, it'll not take as long as what it would if it was like the full bird. So it'll probably only take about 35 minutes to cook. But what I'll do is I'll check it after 30, see how it's going. We'll probe it, make sure it's cooked. If it's not, it goes back in. If it is, then I'm just going to crank the heat right up, like I say, or put the grill on. So we'll see you in about 30 minutes. Right, guys, that's the... 30 minute alarm going off. I've got my probe ready. Let's have a little look. Oh. Look at that beauty. Honestly, I've not done this for such a long time and I don't understand why I don't. So I'm just going to go in the thickest part of the thigh. Let's have a little look. Needs to get over 75. creeping up just a little bit I might give it another five minutes in the oven and then crank the um the grill on just to get some more browning on it because it's not gonna go it's, it's really slowed down from the 75 so back in the five minutes hey right, guys that's been another Oh, five minutes bring it back out same place as before just to make sure that it is right 
<coughs> yeah, it's steaming up there now. So what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to pop that on the grill. So once I've grilled it, it's at 34, sorry, 74. Can you read? Try it there as well. It's going down. What's going on? Right, I'm going to bang it underneath the grill. <coughs> Excuse me for about 10 minutes. And then we'll come back. Ian is just going to devour them chicken wings. And then we'll get it on a plate. Oh, let's have a look. A few minutes and then we'll have another look. Right guys, that's been five minutes with the grill on. Let's have a look at this chicken. Whoa. And my glasses have all steamed up. Right, back, same place again. Yeah, definitely look at that, well over 75. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna get a plate out. I'm gonna move this onto there. Get the plate here. And I'm going to get that and that and get it off this tree, if I can. There. Look at that beauty there. Now I must admit, that does look appetising. And any of the juices that form underneath, I'm sure Ian and me will be dipping that um, the garlic and coriander bread in there. But this does need to rest. As you can see, the steam coming off it. It's well cooked. And I'll just clean up and then we'll come back when we're ready to taste. Right, so Ian's now home from work. Oh so my God. he's going to have... We've decided we're going to have a leg each tonight and then probably have the rest of that tomorrow. So I'm just going to, I've put a little bit of a naan bread on there for him. God, I can't remember the last time we had this. I know it's been so long, hasn't it? Hasn't it been too long though? And we used to have this all the time. Uh huh. Right. Especially in the summer, and get it on the barbecue. Yeah, we'll do it in the barbecue in the summer, we'll do it again. So, a little bit of that. And you want some coleslaw? Yes, please. Just some Iceland coleslaw. I would make our own, but you know. It's well, been we fun. used to do it all the time in the summer, didn't we? Yeah. Right. Just convenient. Size, That's yours. I'm just going to get mine off there. Mm. Right. Mouth's water in here, like. There's a lot of juices there, and I'm sure later on when nobody's looking, we'll be dipping one nan breads in that. Uh, <laughs> mm, I'm not gonna deny. And the chicken wings. Oh yes, that looks absolutely. And then lush. a little bit of that for me. A little bit of coleslaw for me. And then get a naan bread, and then we can sit down and eat. Are you hungry? Or are you starving? I'm, I'm hungry. I'm hungry. I've had a sandwich this morning, didn't I? Yeah. And that's all I've had today. And I'm hungry. <coughs> Excuse right, guys, me. So we'll, we'll see you. Look. look at that, baby. Let's get a shot of that. Oh, yes, please. Right, we'll have a go, guys. Right, I'm just going to get some chicken off of here. 
Just going to try a little bit. If I can get it off. It's not wanting to come away. Look at that though. Let's look at that guys. Oof. Oh my god, my mouth is salivating. What? Oh. It must have been last summer, the last time we've done this, though, oh. hasn't it? You've got like the tandoori crispy skin. Mm -hmm. Well, it's yogurt based, isn't it? Yeah. The taste of the tandoori, the chicken. The chicken's so succulent. I mean, look. That is. Oof. Mm. Mm, 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 mm. That is absolutely banging. Now, let me try one of these. A little bit of this homemade naan bread. Can we give that a go? Mm. Oh, they're really nice. You cannot beat homemade food. Mm -hmm. Proper homemade food. A little bit of the coleslaw. And a little bit of a salad. And that's the perfect mouthful. Mm. That coleslaw sort of cleanses the palate a little bit, doesn't it? Yeah, to go and back the to the... Mm -hmm. To go back to the... See, what I normally do is... <coughs> make it into a wrap. Make it into a, like a wrap. Mm. Well, I've done like two that. bigger ones so you can... If For you... that, I would definitely, guys, give that a go. That is absolutely... Mwah! Delicioso. <laughs> right, guys, thank you very much for watching. It's so much appreciated. And I was going to say about your your the, your pie, how successful the, the egg and bacon pie, pie has been. Would you want any more pies doing? Because we've we've mm -hmm. got a few that we can do. So <coughs> I've just, got just... some. Um, I've got some stewed beef from the butchers in the fridge. Mm -hmm. So if you would like to have um, a steak pie, like. What's on your channel yesterday? Yep. Betty Eats Food. Yeah. That was £8.50 um, from M&S. Mm -hmm. And the beef that I've got in the fridge, that cost £4. So but I just, could do... Yeah. I could do, like, a, a beef pie. It wouldn't mm -hmm. be as big as what the egg no, and bacon no, no. was no, because no. I haven't... The, the amount of no. uh, beef I have is not enough. Um, but, but if you would like to see that, guys, put it in the comments below. Let us know. I was going to say or another, anything else that you want us to do the real favourite of yours is the corned beef and tatey pie corned beef and tatey yeah and that's nice and, that, and the sausage sausage and tomato pie or quiche quiche yeah so yeah just just let us know what you want yeah. and we'll, we'll we'll do our best to do it won't you exactly yeah so thank you very much once again guys and we'll catch you on the next have one have a good evening <laughs>